Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today's lesson is using 3ds Max and Wallworm to get your textures from Max into Source as world brush textures and we're going to create decals. We're going to create a simple scene and export all of the textures we make for it. And we're starting from scratch here. And if you've just opened 3ds Max and never set any of your own uh, default presets, you'll want to start by changing the grid size. You can do that by right clicking the 3D snaps icon, choosing home, and usually the default is 10. 10 is not a good number for a source. You'll probably want something like 8, 16, 32, 64, etc., etc. I'm going to change mine here to 32, and the grid spacing got bigger. For our scene here, we're just going to make a very simple box room. And when you're working with brush geometry, the world geometry, the layout of your map, you always want to have the snaps on. And to begin with, you should always have the snap to grid points turned on. And I'm going to turn off snap to vertex, which I had on for something I did previously. Now we'll want to go and build our basic layout with the box primitive. Now you can use other primitives too, but we're going to lay this out with box, and this would be like using the uh, cube brush inside of Hammer. Now in this scene, the central uh, cube you see here is actually around the roughly the dimensions of a player character in Source, so I can use that for scale. So I'm going to start with making the floor, and then I'm going to make these walls. And you can type in numbers exactly if you want. For these walls, I want them to be 256. Okay, all these walls are 256. Now to get something uh, at the top of this, I'll turn on vertex snap again to make it easy to snap to those points. And then make my ceiling and it snapped down to the grid so I'm gonna put this up to manually type that number into a 64. In Wallworm to tell it that these are gonna be exported as brush geometry you need to select all of the objects in the scene and open up Wallworm Anvil go to tags and say that these are being exported as world geometry. You click that, now those will export as world geometry. What we're going to do now is create the brick texture that we're going to put on all these walls. We're going to create it from scratch. And to do that we're going to use the material editor and we're using Max 2013 here so if you have uh, some of the latest versions of Max you'll see the kind of editor that I'm going to show you here. It's called Slate. You click that icon to bring it up or hit M on the keyboard. Now in this scene I already have one material and that's the uh, wall worm stamp that we're going to use for decal later that started in the scene. But for now we're going to work on a brick geometry. And to keep things nice and organized in Slate we're going to create a new view and we're going to call this brick textures. And now we're in this view. We're going to start by creating a new material. We're going to use a standard material. And that's important. Generally speaking, using Wallworm to export things, you want to use either standard, multi sub object, DirectX, or Blend. In fact, DirectX I recommend avoiding unless you're doing displacements. Now, the diffuse texture to begin with in this one, we're going to use Tile. and we're going to apply this to all the walls. So I selected my four walls, I selected my material here, and I hit Assign Material to Selection. I don't see it immediately in the viewport, I can see it by clicking this Show Shaded Material in Viewport button. I'm going to hide, I right click the ceiling and choose Hide Selection to hide it, because I want to see it from the inside. Now it's fine that this is not all tiling correctly and it's stretched out on this side and this side because we're going to fix that later with UVW mapping. 
first we want to create our our tiles here. So we're going to open up our tiles map by double clicking it. And you'll see that this has various options for this map. We have stack bond which makes this type of layout of bricks. You can choose different ones to see different things. We're going to use the English bond here. And we can do different things like controlling the colors and textures of the different um, things in here. So we want the texture in here to be a little bit cooler. So we're going to choose a different color. And something more like that. And we're actually going to tell it to give a color variance. Increase the color variance some. So the different faces of textures are going to be different colors a little bit. For both of these, we actually want... No, we'll just leave it at that. We're just going to use a very basic color. And once we have this, we can render that to a bitmap. But we want to add a little bit extra flavor first. We're going to make a new map. We're going to call this noise. And this noise one We're going to bring its size down a lot smaller. We're going to give it a fractal. Make it very small. We're going to use this noise in these maps here to give it some bump. We're in this material, not in the map. I'm going to go here to bump. So if I render this, If I render this, you see it has, let's zoom in a little bit. You see it has some texturing in it. And we are also going to want the, the uh, bricks to stick out a little bit from the grout. Okay? So we're going to use some more techniques here. We're going to create a composite map. going to add a new layer to it. We're going to put this bitmap in, this bump map. And we're going to add another layer on top and put this one back in there. Now we want this map to have a very big bump value. So to control that, we're going to create an output. And we're going to increase the bump value of this significantly. And now you can see that we have more of a, these bricks feel like they're jumping out a little bit more. Now the color on this actually might be a little bit too much, too much darkening. And I maybe want this bump value to actually come out a little bit more. So now we have a texture where it's looking bumpy and it's looking like these things stick out. There are many ways to create the bitmaps inside of Max and depending on what you're doing you'll choose different ways. If I didn't need to worry about bump maps, uh, creating a normal map, I could actually just uh, click my object here and choose render map and we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to render
call this www.brick.tga. In fact, I'm going to call it brick diff for diffuse. And another thing, you always need to make sure the dimensions of your map are multiples of two, uh, a factor of two. I'm going to say that this bitmap actually is 1024 by 1024 and we're gonna render it so here's our bitmap however we need to create a normal map here and to do that we'll have to do another technique uh, there may be other technique there's several ways to do things in Max I'm just gonna show you the way that, that I think is easiest so we're going to zoom out here and we're going to create a plane on the ground and I'm going to make this thing 1024 by 1024 to match the dimensions of my bitmap. I'm going to apply that material that I created. I just dragged from there to there to do that. And now that I have this I'm going to go to rendering, render to texture, and I'm going to use no padding on this. And the existing channel one is fine. I'm going to add diffuse. I want it to be 1024, and I want to add a normal and I want this one at 1024 also. It's fine to output that into a normal bump and we're going to render that out. Once we've done this we can open up slate again and we'll pick this texture here and we'll see that it created two bitmaps. One is the normal map and one is the diffuse map. If we look at our normal map, you'll see it's kind of like the shape of the bumps with the the uh, the little texture that we gave on there. And now that texture is ready to go into source. We can export it pretty easy. So we're going to select these walls and apply that texture to it. If you want, you can leave this uh, plane here for later reference and use if you want to do things with it. It doesn't matter. It can be in the scene. It's not going to export as the map. Just things we designate as world geometry and models and a few other things like lights. At this point, we can actually export this texture into source and it will come out however we want it. Now, I do want to show you some things about how you can control the the way these textures uh, tile and come out by selecting all of these uh, faces I can apply a UVW map and by default it chooses planar which is not what you want for things like this you want box and when we put it on box what it's going to do is allow us to choose the tiling and rotation and scale of this UVW. So if I open up the UVW gizmo and select the gizmo here, I can actually move the texturing around. And right now I'm moving it just in the Y axis and I can turn off snapping for this purpose. And I can move the textures around exactly where I want. So if I want these to, to appear kind of like that I can do that. If I don't want, if I want it to be more like this, you know, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I can even make it go up and down. I'm going to move it back to the original location and show you that over here you can change the, the length, width, and height of these. And it essentially does the same type of thing, but this time it's stretching it out and shrinking them. And it's always in the dimension that you're choosing. So
So this is equates to uh, in Hammer when you're doing the face scale. This is the same kind of thing. It's just a different format of doing it. So if we want these to be half a quarter of the size that they would be, 256, 256, and 256. And now these are a lot smaller. Let me go ahead and hide this plane. So now let's export those brush textures. First, you need to make sure that Steam is running. And the next thing, we after Steam is running, we need to select at least one object in the scene that has your brush geometry. If you don't select one object, it will select everything in this uh, next utility I'm going to show you. So if you select specific objects, the brush texture exporter will actually only use those objects at that point in time, which is convenient because if you have too many, it can take a while. So we're going to go to exporters and choose brush exporters. And it's going to list in here all of the materials that can be exported as uh, brush materials. We can choose the compression type. If you leave it blank, it's the default, which is DXT3. You can choose DXT or no compress. I'm going to use, uh, make them a little bit nicer than the DXT3. Use light map generic for these walls. The surface property of these is brick. And I don't need a detail type because that's only for blend textures and displacements. Okay, so there is something you have to understand in, in the current implementation. There is going to be a problem here because the path of this material is named by the name of the material and when I baked that material I forgot to rename it to the proper thing. So I need to close out of here bring back my material editor. We want to save this in a folder called My Stuff Walls. In fact, we'll call it Brick One. Now this is important. It's something that I haven't really documented a lot, but I want to point this out. If I if I do not finish this material with a trailing slash, okay, then the name of the material will be based off of this name here, of the diffuse bitmap for your brush materials. However, so if I were to put a slash here, my material would be my stuff, walls, brick one, and then plane 001 diffuse map. I don't want it to be called that. I want it to be my stuff walls brick one. So I'm going to get rid of that slash and hit enter. Now my material will be in a folder called my stuff walls and it will have the name brick one dot VMT. So let's go back here into the brush exporter and you'll see that now it shows the proper naming of these. Okay, now, at the moment there's a known bug. You have to compile the textures before you add the map. You can't do all three at once. It's a bug that I will fix. It's currently in there, so be aware of this. So for, first of all, I want to export just the textures. And as you can see, it made this in My Stuff, Walls, Brick 1, and this is where the VTFs are going to go. And now let's export the material itself and it exported. Now I want to see where those textures are just to show you. If I hit F11 after I export, I'll see where the path to the last export happened. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to go to that address. There's a VMT in here, 
If we open up this VMT, it's going to have all the information about this texture. If I go into the folder there, you'll see my VTFs that are referenced in that VMT. So let's close these out. And now let me show you how to make a decal. We're going to use this texture here and create a decal that I can plaster on the walls. And I just want to put it right up here. Okay. To make decals in Wallworm, you use the worm face utility right here. Now, we're going to use decal. Now, when I use decal, it will let me, if I hit start, if I, and then I hold down alt, if I hold down alt when I click a face, it will then set that material as the current material that it's going to plop down as a decal. And now, when I go out here and click, there's my decal. Now notice it's all black and I want it to be white. The reason this is happening, let's bring up my material editor here and go to this material, is that I need to pipe this material into the opacity slot. If I do that, it will then show the decal of how it's going to be. And we're going to have to export this decal. So I'm going to right click on the scene to stop the worm face function of dropping decals. Well, let's actually add one more, one more wall worm over here on that side. Now the size of these decals matches the bitmap dimension. So if you want a smaller one, you have to use a smaller bitmap or use overlay which you can scale. The decals will not let you scale. I'm going to right click to cancel that action. I'm going to close this out. Now I'm choosing the decal here and then going back to the exporters. Export as a brush texture. Again, I almost made the same mistake last time. I didn't give the material a proper name. So let's close this out. Let's go back in here. Double click my material. I'm going to call this, put this in a folder called my stuff slash decals slash WW logo. And that will be the VMT. Let's bring up the exporters, brush textures. And now you see that where it's going to be in this VMT. And first we want to export the VTF. The, the texture. In, now again in future versions you may be able to just check all these at once. In fact you will at some point but you do have to deal with the bug right now that you can't do the material and the textures all at the same time. So we created that and let's create this uh, material and let's look at this F11 this is the path there's our VMT of the decal and notice it knew it was a decal because we used the decal tool we only have a couple more things to do here we'll add a light into this scene we'll use a target direct light because target direct turns into a light environment Now if you are wanting to preview the lighting in a map inside of here and you don't like this little cone, what you can do with your light is when it's selected, go to the modify panel, go to the directional parameters and click overshoot and then it will show you um, it won't be just in the radius of that. So my light's going to come from that angle and I need to, in order for a light environment to work, we need to have a sky and I'm going to unhide 
the brush that I used as my sky. And I'm going to give it a material. And for this material, you just have to give it a name. And we're going to give this a standard material and send max so we know it's it's kind of the sky by just looking at it. We can give it tools slash tools skybox. If you give that that name and apply that to a box, it will automatically have the sky material on it. Let's give this a little bit more of the standard. Okay. And I can go ahead and hide that again. In the floor for now, we're not going to make a texture for. All right, at this point, we should be able to just export our scene to VMF. And what I'm going to do here is go to the exporters, export scene as VMF. That's the map format for source. I'm going to just leave all these options, except I'm going to tell it to compile. And it's going to go through and compile the map. And I do want to point out that you do want to make sure you have version 1.53 or later because uh, there are some functions in the exporter um, dealing with overlays that were fixed in this version. And that also applies to the version of Wallworm that uh, has uh, properly proper overlay tools. Some of the overlay functions did not work entirely accurately uh, in regards to exporting textures and other things in previous versions of Wallworm. So you'll want Wallworm Model Tools version 1.84 and the VMF Exporter 1.53. So let's open up our scene. Uh, first we'll go ahead and open it up in Hammer and there's our decal on the walls here. There's our textures on the wall and let's look at it in game. So we're going to run our map here in Counter-Strike now. And there's our decal and there's our brick texture. Again, my name is Sean Olson. This has been a demonstration of using the Wallworm model tools and other Wallworm functions and uh, to teach you how to use the texture exporters and the new decal functions. Uh, again, I want to remind you that you need the latest version of Wallworm to get all of the exporting to work out correctly with overlays and brush textures. You can always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. You can also participate in the Wallworm forums at wallworm.net. You can learn more about me at my website at www.seanolson.net. Thank you and have a good day.